I finally get what Kathy Yan and Margot Robbie, who's a producer here, as well as the star, I get what they're trying to do. It's Amelie meets Mrs. Maisel. And that's kind of brilliant. And I wish that they were bringing that up in, as they promote this movie, because both of those things are incredibly well received. Not so much box office wise and audience, they don't have big audiences, which should have been a red flag when modeling your movie uh, after them, but they are both very highly critically acclaimed. And so that would help, I think, this movie also potentially be highly critically acclaimed. Uh, it's very, actually, as, as different it is as in tone from Todd Phillips' Joker, it's very similar in that it's taking a comic book character and modeling it after something that's non-comic booky and uh, highbrow. Although Todd Phillips made, didn't make a secret out of it where they seem to be really hiding that here. And maybe, you know what, maybe I'm giving them too much credit, but they should run with it and say that this was the plan all along because it makes them look really good. Uh, now, as you all know from my coverage, I do appreciate a big swing, but unfortunately a big swing can often lead to a big miss. For every Joker, there are far more uh, misses like Batman v Superman and The Last Jedi, uh, which I, I enjoyed both those movies, but you know, they ultimately, you know, really hurt, hurt their, their franchises. I don't think this is going to hurt the franchise, but it, you know, it might lead to a bit of a dead end for Harley Quinn, but that's fine. DC can just back her up and take her down another road. Uh, it's, and also, you know, some people, this is a low budget film. So if it only appeals to like a, a smaller audience, it could, that could be fine for it. I mean, Harley Quinn is a character who should appeal to a big audience. So I think to some degree, Warner Brothers would be leaving money on the table. But if this can be highly, if this can get critical acclaim and solid box office, well, then I think Warner Brothers and Margot Robbie would be very happy with that. It's going it, to, I think that a, a lot remains to be seen with how this film is received both critically media-wise, uh, and also um, uh, at the box office. It could end up with fans. It could end up being like a Mad Max Fury Road, which I think would be wonderful. Uh, now, I think that some people are guaranteed gonna love this movie, just for sure. They're gonna love it. Um, so I think that Margot Robbie's, this is very much hers, her Birds of Prey will definitely have an audience. And again, the question just is how big? I mean, it, they kind of botched this trailer react, uh, release yesterday, but it, it never trended. Even it, There's so much new footage in here that it should trend. It should have trended. Uh, I don't even think last, an hour after it had been released, it still hadn't uh, trended top 20. And not anything from the trailer. Forget Birds of Prey, no Harley Quinn, no Black Mask, no, uh, no Canary Cry, no Hyena. How does Bruce the Hyena not trend? So I think that, you know, that this movie is not getting people excited just yet. I think they should have released the trailer at Brazil Comic Con. Uh, it was two days before Wonder Woman's uh, panel uh, because that's when everybody was paying attention to it. All right, and they did play the trailer there. They just didn't release it publicly. Okay, so let's uh, let's break this thing down. As I said, there's a lot of goodies in here. Some I like, some I don't. Some I don't like, and some I don't know how I feel about. All right. Now, as I said before, I do love her shoes. She has an amazing shoe closet. Now, this is interesting. So, that guy. This looks like a porno, doesn't it? Which maybe is intentional. Like that guy so doesn't look like he works at a police station. So she says, "I'd like to report a crime," and I have to say, it's very poorly done. But is that? Is that the genius of it? Is it poorly done intentionally because Harley Quinn isn't an actress? I don't know. I mean, Margot Robbie is not only, I think, a good actress, but she gets a lot of nominations at this point. She's a double BAFTA nominee in the same category. So I would think that she would do a good job here. But, you know, part of me, I have to say, I make the comparison, I've been thinking about this, to uh, Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow. Both he and Margot Robbie knocked it out of the park with very strong you know, choices, big swings with their introductory movies. And audiences had, I think, a much bigger reaction than anyone expected both times. Instant stars for both of them. It did make both of them actually instant mainstream stars, those two roles. But I think in both cases, neither one of them really had a strong enough handle on the character to go forward with it. And I worry that she'll have the same problems with Harley Quinn as, because she can't even hold on to the accent, uh, her own Harley Quinn accent, as you can see in the trailer alone, that Johnny Depp ultimately had with Jack Sparrow. Although everyone continued to enjoy Jack Sparrow, even if he wasn't done as well as that first movie. So the same could be said for Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. All right, so 
I mean, uh, and so this is cute. I like, I like uh, how, you know, it looks a little proppy. I'm like, do those canisters really work? And she's like, I'll show you. But she is ca carrying non-lethal rounds. And there's a, I like the glitter gun that's later on in the trailer. That's cool. Um, but, you know, she likes to doodle, boy. That's what she spends a lot of time on, at, at home on her sofa, I guess, uh, decorating her weapons. Um, it's, you know, it's, 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 you know, it looks like a fashion spread at uh, Barney's, right? While well, Barney's is going out of business. Oh, what's that tell you? You know, it's very Henry Bendel, which also went out of business. But, you know, it's very, like, fashion-y. But, you know, I don't know if that limits the audience or not. And some of you were like, who cares if it limits the audience? Well, I told you that I felt that A Wrinkle in Time was limiting the audience. And then people like Brie Larson say, well, who cares if it's not for everyone? Well, you know, they spent a lot more money on A Wrinkle in Time. That needed to be for everyone. But again, the low budget for this movie is a blessing. If you're going to spend a lot of money, you need to sell a lot of tickets to make that money back. And a profit, because this is a business. All right. So that's also a non-lethal round. But then we go to the voiceover. Uh, very Deadpool. I told you, you know, she'll be breaking the fourth wall. I don't know if the, I don't think the character needs to do that, quite frankly. Now, some of you felt that she she so so she said she broke up with the, she broke up with the Joker. It's totally mutual. I'm sure it's not, which is hilarious. But I like that she's passing it off as it is. Now, some of you said I saw some people go. Oh, does this mean the Joker is dead? Well, based on Brazil Comic Con, the way this is going is that she's exploding the place. Ace Chemicals, as you can see where she became Harley Quinn, where their love, you know, seemed to reach its high point or where it first officially started. And so she just wants that off the face of the earth, right? I'd be like, that's iconic Batman mythology. You don't have the right to get rid of that. They're like, it's CGI, I don't worry. Just click and we'll put it back. And it's very cartoonish. It explodes with colorful explosions, right? I like that she just has one shoe on. But her acting seems like acting to me. Although I like this. This is good, and I know a lot of you like this as well. Sometimes she really gets it right. Like, sometimes she's just really good, and I feel like maybe if she had a more experienced director, they'd just keep doing takes on all the shots until she got as good as she is in the other ones. So she's eating cheese whiz. Interesting, most women would go with, um, with, whip, uh, with Ready Whip, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, so she's very sad. And I like that. I hope Margot Robbie actually eats that because that would be hilarious. So this is a shot from later on where I think that's Huntress driving her on the motorcycle and they're good, she's gonna launch her on her roller skates, uh, which is, I think, I hope that scene is cool. Come on, Chad, Chad Stahelski, who came in here and worked on this. So there's Victor Zaz. Also, there's um, Black Mask, that's his mask. He's apparently into BDSM, which is either uh, not good or very a very healthy way to express yourself. We'll see how the movie decides to go with it. Um, but I'd be curious to see what the logic is behind him wanting to wear a mask. Why would Ewan McGregor want to Gregor want to cover up that face? I like Ewan McGregor a lot. He's very good here, I think, what, I, what we can see of him. But that is a disturbing wall. It's always that one. You know, she hates Joker, but they seem to be the same interior decorator. Or maybe she did all his decorating for him, and that's why their layers look very similar. But I like the longer hair on her, I have to say. I think it looks better. So... I like, now look at that. He's such a professional. I love the, Ewan McGregor. He's a professional actor and he's playing a very professional criminal. I just think, you know, that just oozes the guy in charge. I think it's fantastic. And I like his gloves. Speaking of fashion forward. So here, she's in the evidence room and they actually have her get on a coke high. I mean, here's the thing. Deadpool had a lot of really adult humor and a lot of people took their kids out of the movie once it started. But, you know, and I, I, of course, said that they should have had a PG-13 version of that film. And I think that Deadpool will become PG-13 when he makes his MCU debut, uh, you know, sooner. So we don't know when, but, you know, they, as, he, as he said over the holidays, they're, they're working on it. But I, I mean, like, it's one thing to have drugs in the movie, but to have the lead character actually taking drugs and getting a benefit from it, I, I just feel, again, you're leaving more and more, more and more money on the table. It's just becoming so niche, it might as well be a streaming show. All right. So she's like, super powered. That's pretty cool. I do like the action, and I think Margot Robbie and whoever her stunt person is are doing a very nice job. Uh, very sharp moves. I don't know what Chad Stahelski shot and what was done originally, but I think it all looks good. Uh, this is crazy. How does Victor Zaz not feel some very, she's not even really a child anymore, a teenager's hand in his pants. I mean, she doesn't even bump into him. I mean, like, wow, he must be really zoned out, man. Talk about, it seems like, more drug use. Don't take drugs, kids, because you're, you get pickpocketed in broad daylight really obviously with someone's hand fully down your pants. All right. 
So I hope she doesn't eat it. You know, that was in the original edit. They've done a lot of cutting. Apparently that's been, or part of it's been taken out. That looks also too big to eat. I, I, I just don't think it's a good idea. All right. I can't believe that's Cassandra Kane. We're, I think a lot of this stuff, we're just gonna have to let it go, right? All right. So I like that he has his pants rolled up, but he has no socks on. Very cool. So she's talking about here how everybody has a problem with, he's got a lot of lady problems, okay? So uh, Cassandra Cain has robbed him. Uh, Black Canary has uh, betrayed him. I wonder what's going on between the two of them. And then they say that Huntress killed his BFF, but not Victor's ass, so I don't, I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, I guess he has a lot of, a lot of uh, friends, friends. Um, Although I do like this. It's very clearly CGI'd, and you can see a lot of CGI blood splatter, but it is, there is blood splatter there, so I appreciate it. So she's stabbing this guy as they go down the slide. That's very Huntress. And I do like uh, Harley Quinn's reactions, like, you're so cool. I don't know why they're all following Harley Quinn. I guess, you know, I'd like to see someone try to take over as leader, quite frankly, right? Uh, but, and this is a, a crazy set. I don't know if it looks kind of unprofessional to me, but yet it's interesting. Okay. And then they say Renee, Mon Renee Montoya is building a case against him, but she's clearly quit. She's like, see ya. I think that's Cassandra on that picture there. That's her mugshot there next to her. So she's like, see ya, I'm going to join a girl gang. I like this shot quite a bit. Again, I don't know why Ewan McGregor would cover his face up. That's a cool suit. And I like that his gloves kind of look like bones in that shot. And you can see there's a souvenir novelty stand behind them. I guess Harley Quinn is the one who brings, it's the, her idea to bring them, to, maybe it's an old Joker hideout. And so she's like, I know this place very well. Let's have this go down here. That would make sense. Although why would Roman go along with it? That's Black Mask's real name. I like this uh, Batman the Animated Series style car. So there are some cheap masks. I guess that's his henchman. He's into masks apparently. They'd be like, why do we get such ugly masks? He's like, shut up and go in there and die. You're all red shirts anyway. So she's like, we all have to work together. And they're like, okay, we just are so happy to be in a movie. Uh, both as characters and as actors. All right, so he puts on his mask. Somehow by the end of the movie, that's gonna get fused to his face. And then you're like, are we still gonna pay for you and McGregor? I don't know, it made it, Jim Carrey and the Grinch makeup made a difference. Universal tried to get out of using him. They were like, why do we have to pay Jim Carrey money if we can't see Jim Carrey? And they did tests with the makeup on him and someone else. And they were like, we can tell. So I think oh, you could probably tell with you and McGregor. All right, so there they are. I, uh, I will talk about the hyena when the hyena shows up more at the end. Uh, but you know, they're enjoying some delicious burritos, making me want a burrito. All right, so. There you can see Huntress, I believe, is uh, you know towing along Harley on her roller skates, and Harley goes to take out this car. She's no Gina Carano, so I'm impressed that she's able to take out all these grown men, unless she's on another coke high. But now here they try and work in the psychiatrist angle, which I think kind of, I mean, I see what they're doing. I don't love it, but I do appreciate the nod to you know her psychiatrist background. I like this. That's one of my favorite shots in the entire trailer. That's great. Taking him out with a confetti, like a confetti uh, balloon, you know, it's enough, it's enough of an impact to stop him and it looks amazing. It's a great choice. It hits, it checks all the boxes when it comes to Harley Quinn, what you want in a Harley Quinn movie. Whoever came up with that is a genius. It's fantastic. So I like that they, I think it's funny that they credit the characters and there's, uh, by the way, Cassandra Kane. Uh, is clearly at the roller derby match. So I like it's funny that they ca they have the characters rather than um, the actors. But also, I, I just, you know, all these women beating up all these guys. I mean, at the end of the day, testosterone is a factor. So female vigilantes and villains, if they're going to enter the physical part of this, they need to have things to help them out, like the canary cry, which will come up shortly. But just, you know, I don't know. Like there's one shot with speaking of Black Canary, in just a moment where it's so clearly choreographed, it's like, it's like ridiculous. Okay, so all these women are taking out all these men, but Victor Zaz is like, I have some tricks up my sleeve. So there's the glass shattering that we've seen before. I do love her in the roller derby outfit. I think it looks fantastic. Um, I didn't love the comic that this is based on, to be honest with you. I thought it was all over the place, just like the movie is. Uh, and it wasn't as sophisticated as, um, although the comic has given away to a lot, of, a lot of great things. This movie, which we hope will work out. I love the animated series on DC Universe. 
but the roller derby angle was one of the better things that they came up with. And she looks great there. It's very Harley. And there's Victor Zaz in what seems to be happier days. He's having such a great time. I don't know if that's his family or not, but he's, he looks funny. That's funny. I like that. He's like, oh, I love my family because his face isn't all messed up. So clearly, as I said, happier days. All right. So more fighting. There's the canary cry. Looks pretty good. I got to say. I like it. This is such a niche aesthetic stylistically. It's, it's, it's interesting. We'll see how it comes across. I think the, the costumes for everyone but Harley are pretty bad. Um, then I do love this uh, Fightin' in the Rain mu uh, musical number. I think that's great. I wonder if they'll play, if they got the rights to the song. That would be fantastic. So then she lights his beard on fire. Very true romance. And she is a little Patricia Arquette-like, you know, in that, in that movie. Oh, he's doing more of the hand gestures. He really, I guess that's why he wears the gloves. He's very much like a conductor with his, with his bad guys. And he, oh, he has popcorn. He has snacks. He's got snacks. I love it. And then here is that shot I was talking about. So Black Canary is going to do some martial arts moves. She's going to kick this door. But you can see that the guy's just waiting there holding the door for her. Like, why would he do that? I'd be like, you have plenty of time to get away, buddy. He's like, no, I got to set up this cool shot. Uh, and so then she just kicks the door onto his head. Well, he was waiting for it. He was like, I'm ready. And I'm sure he pulled it in quite a bit to make sure it went through. So you can, I mean, that's just a very sloppy uh, fight shot. It's just really poorly done. Uh, embarrassingly so. Well, but they're, look, they're, hope, maybe they're laughing at it. I do like this. I mean, if they're going to have, I hope they, I, I, I have, I think that I didn't like the, um, the, the, the dick pics on the diamond, uh, that a little girl had swallowed storyline, but I think it's a really interesting idea to have an LGBT villain, as long as he's not done in a camp way, like in a, an insulting way. But I think it's great, especially in a, in a female centric movie. I think it's a really interesting choice and I hope they don't dial that back. I hope that they, they go for it. I mean, the worst thing to do would be to only kind of go for it. Uh, we don't need more queer baiting in Hollywood. So I, I'm, I'm excited for it and I hope it's very very much in the movie. Uh, so I like that shot a lot. I'm like, yes, go for it. All right. I hope they're happy together. All right. So, uh, but I just want to make sure that Black Mask is still a very good villain that's not a joke, but is someone that a lot of people want to see more of in other DCEU movies. That's what you want. You want, if you're going to have an LGBT character, you want a vibrant one that's competitive and, you know, is there to stay. Uh, so that's a great shot, uh, and then she does, she does the wink, and they put, they even look, it's so like Mrs. Maisel and Amelie with the, with the, the, the uh, light lens, the light, the light flare on the rhinestone on the sunglasses, and they're like, it's really about all about Harley Quinn. <laughs> and yes, a hyena in a bathtub. This looks fantastic. Uh, and oh, by the way, that stupid beaver is in this movie. I'm so upset about it. It's an inappropriate joke. Or she's like, have you seen my beaver? And there's my beaver. And you're like, are you kidding me? I hated it in the comic that it comes from, and I hate it here. Uh, but who cares? Who cares about that stupid beaver when we can look at this hyena? Uh, I think she should have two. Two hyenas are really cool. Just look at uh, Halle Berry and John Wick. Uh, just uh, look at Jumanji had two hyenas, and they were super cool, the latest Jumanji. So I guess she can only afford one right now, but I hope she works her way up to two pretty soon. But I think this is a great gag. I love that she has the hyena, and I think it's very funny that she says she named him Bruce after that hunky Wayne guy. Although that joke really only works if it's Ben Affleck, not so much Robert Pattinson, who seems, you know, uh, not really a match with Margot Robbie. So I, I like his laugh. That's funny. That's great. I like that. I like Harley Quinn with her hyenas is pretty, pretty amazing. You just can't go wrong there. So that's my shot-by-shot uh, -shot breakdown of the trailer. I think this is a real wild card, and I guess... You know, we'll see how it turns out. I'm sure Warner Brothers would love Joker or even Joker Light instead of, you know, another Batman v Superman. Uh, yeah, and they even made a lot of money. What they're really trying to avoid here is a Charlie's Angels or a Ghostbusters, which were both also female-centric films. So we'll see how this comes across. So what did you think? Uh, and by the way, Charlie's Angels was pretty darn good, and it's a shame. It's a shame that it wasn't given a shot. All right, so, but this luckily at least has a comic book, you know, it's going for it, and I think people will be more interested as a result. All right, so share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.